Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. We're going to be going over scientific notation today, so please remember to follow along with your notes and make sure that you fill in everything as you see it. So, scientific notation. The thing about scientific notation is it's something that you've probably done multiple times throughout your school career. It's just maybe something you forgot. So, uh, what is scientific notation? It's a way of expressing numbers between 1 to 10, and we call that number a coefficient, multiplied by 10 raised to a power that we call an exponent. So the general format for scientific notation looks like this, n times 10 raised to the power m. n is our coefficient, which we literally just talked about, and has to be a number from 1 to 10. m, on the other hand, is an exponent. And so the exponent also has to be a nice whole number, and it can be both positive or negative. Now what's the point of using scientific notation? Well, it's always used to represent either very large or very small numbers. So for example, if I am going to just write out a number here, there we go. If I write out that number, it can get very confusing because there are so many zeros randomly in it. So scientific notation gives us a way of sort of expressing that number in sort of an easy to digest smaller format. So here I have so many zeros to keep track of, I'm probably going to make a mistake if I try to copy it down. But if I write this in scientific notation instead, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I write that in scientific notation, it's much more manageable. So that's a large example. Now that works equally with small numbers, like point zero 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 zero. let's say 9. So in small digits, it's the zeros in the front that can sometimes give people problems, because if you copy down one zero, you'll be off by a factor, you know, of 10. So in this situation, I could also write this as scientific notation, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so instead of having to worry about zeros, all I have to do is write 9 times 10 to the negative 7 power. All right, so on that last sort of slide, how did I go about making those numbers into scientific notation? Well, there are just two rules. The first rule is that you have to move your decimal place over. And so you have a number, let's say like 170, uh, that's where the decimal point would be. The first step is to move your decimal place over until you obtain a number between 1 to 9.99. So before, when we said you have to have a number between 1 to 10 as your coefficient, what we really were saying is it has to be between 1 and 9.99. And so right now I have 170. If I move my decimal place over, I have one space, that is, I have 17. If I move it over a second space, I have 1.7. Now, 1.7 is a number between 1 and 9.99, so I stop moving my decimal place. Now, I moved my decimal place over two places, so what does that tell me? Well, the number of decimal places you move is the power of your exponent. So I have 1.7, and I always have times 10, and I raise it to a power. In this situation, the power is 2. Why? Because, as you can see right here, I moved my decimal place over two spots. And so, if you move your decimal place to the left, which is exactly what I just did, that means that my exponent is positive. So, 1.7 times 10 to the 2 is how I would write 170 in scientific notation. So take a look at this example here at the bottom. So we have a large number again, and so I'm moving my decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spots. Why 7 spots? Well, when I move my decimal place over 7 spots, I get 6.5, and 6.5 is a number between 1 to 9.9, .9, just like step 1 says. After that, all I've got to do is count however many decimal places I moved, and that gives me the power. So 6.5 times 10 to the 7. Now how do I know it's to the 7 and not to the negative 7 or something like that? It's because I was moving my decimal place over to the left. What happens when you start moving your decimal place instead to the right? Well then, that means the power is negative, and that must mean that our starting number was small. So if you look at this example over here, and we're going to start over here in the very corner, we have point zero 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 eight two. So all I've got to do is move my decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I get a number, again, just like before, between 1 and 
8.2. And so that's my first step already done. Then all I had to do was count however many decimal places I had to move over, and I had to move it over seven spaces. Now, why this is 8.2 times 10 to the negative 7 instead of just the 7 is because I was moving my decimal place the opposite direction. So I was moving my decimal place to the right in order to get my nice scientific notation. All right, so let's go through these examples. If you want, you can try them on your own and then just check and see if your answers are correct, but we're gonna be going over the answers right away. So if you wanna give yourself a little bit of time, pause the video. All right, so in this first one, I have to move my decimal place over to the right, which means I'm gonna have a negative exponent, and I have to get to 3.4. That's the first um, number that I'm going to be able to get from one to 9.9 .9, times 10, raised to the power of however many decimal places I moved over. And so I have to move my decimal place over five times, but I, since I'm moving it to the right, it is the negative fifth. And yes, because there's a unit of meters at the end, I have to include the unit meters in my answer. All right, for the next one, I've got a very large answer. And so that means that I've got to move my decimal place to the left, which means it's going to be a positive exponent. So when I do this, the first number I can get between the correct values are 6.79, 6 uh, 6 and then I have to move my decimal place over seven times in order to get to that. And so yes, I have to include CD candela as my unit. All right, now for the next one, again, I'm moving my decimal place over now to the right again. And so I have 0 0.0023. The very first number I can get would be 2.3 times 10. And I had to move my decimal place over three times. But since I'm moving to the right, it's to the negative 3. And that would be grams because that's my unit associated with that answer. Now I've got 43,000 ampere. And so uh, I'm moving my decimal place over to the left in order to get that to work. And so that would be 4.3 times 10 to the fourth ampere. And that's how you do scientific notation. Now you could have easily done the opposite of this and turned these guys into just standard notation by merely reversing the process.